Hello and welcome to Build. I'm Ash Percival and we are coming to you live from London this afternoon where today we are joined by two of the stars of Our Girl. Please welcome Michelle Keegan and Ben Aldridge. <laughs> Uh, now, of course, if you've got a question for these guys, you can tweet us. We are at Build Series LDN on Twitter. Or if you're watching on Facebook or via the old app as well, you can tweet. Uh, you can also leave your questions there, and I will try and get to as many as I can in the next 20 or so minutes. Now, guys, hello. Welcome Hi. to Build. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you, mic. You all right? Yeah, you. Yeah, good, 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 good. And you've got your microphones now as well. Yes, so perfect. the mics now. I'm used um, to that. So, our girl, it's back on screens tonight, and we yeah. left you at a very sort of emotional, precarious position when we when we sort of took a break from series three. Now, for those who can't remember, remind us of where we were at, because it was quite a part of the story, wasn't it? Ben, I need your help. <laughs> um, we were in Nepal. Um, we were there, how many episodes? We did four episodes in Nepal, and it follows two section yep. on a mission, a humanitarian mission. Yep. Um, and, and we then end up in Afghanistan yes. on a separate mission because of some girls that are trafficked. Trafficked, yeah, on the um, border. And uh, we follow them there where stuff kind of goes pretty wrong. Very wrong. Very wrong. Very wrong. Yeah. Yes. And yes. Uh, we lose the love of your life. Lose the love of my life. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, we were in Malaysia. I know, Malaysia. Laughing, it's not funny. I know, it's yes. funny. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we were in Malaysia when it was actually televised. And remember, the next day we woke up very early for work and we were just looking at all the tweets that people were saying. And literally, the I, think the, I think the country's heart's broken <laughs> as well. Definitely. What kind of stuff were they saying? Because I guess, like, they're such a beloved couple, Georgie. Yeah. And well, Alice. I think the whole storyline was, will they, won't they? Yeah. And I think they, you know, they finally got together. They finally got what they wanted. And it just got ripped out of their hands in, like, a second. <laughs> and I think it was really unexpected as well, wasn't it? Very, yeah. In the episode, yeah. you didn't know it was going to come. And then it was like... Pfft. Well, we yeah. had Luke on, on the show, like, when, when sort of Series 3 came back originally. Yeah. And we had no, no idea. idea that that was I was happening. so happy that, that happened. I'm so happy that it didn't get happy leaked. Happy he's dead. <laughs> no, I'm not happy he's dead. I'm not happy he's dead. But I'm very, <laughs> I'm very happy that that didn't get leaked. Because sometimes you see programs now and you know what's going to happen yeah. before it's even on TV. So I'm very, very happy that that didn't get leaked. Just that element of surprise, isn't it? It sort of adds something else for the exactly. viewer as well, right? Exactly, yeah. Now, what were those scenes like to film? Because he died in quite sort of explosive circumstances, which I guess as an actor, those scenes are really fun to film. But then you've got the emotion of him doing more. I think they were pretty fun, weren't they? In terms of all, all the action yeah. leading up to hit that massive explosion was... was it gets quite intense in terms of filming them. They're quite high octane. Yeah. But... Um, but then, yeah, you had to deal with all, you had to deal with the, the kind emotional of emotional uh, side, big time crying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which I tears. love. <laughs> um, yeah, it was emotional. It was, it was, it was very emotional. And I think the whole storyline leading up to that point as well um, helped because it was a very emotionally charged mm. um, episode. So, like Ben said, there was a massive fight scene going on beforehand, the action scene, and then that happened. It was very high energy, the whole thing. What it's was it fun. like, sort of, because Luke must have left halfway through sort of filming the series, I guess, because you filmed, correct me if I'm wrong, but you filmed it all in kind of like one block. What was it like, sort of, seeing him disappear halfway through filming? That's literally how it was, wasn't it? We, he, he died at the end of the day, and then the, we started the next block, a new episode the next day. It was like, see ya. Yeah, it was kind of weird. We had like 12 episodes to film in such a short amount of time that... It was, um, we just had to get on with it. We had to, we couldn't even think about it. Yeah, it the was, train still carries on yeah, going, doesn't it? Is it? So so it's, the show is filmed, it's so, such a fast pace that you just had to get on with it. Yeah. It was really odd, though, at first. I know, that obviously, we didn't know, as, as we've said, but how far in advance did you know that that, that twist was coming? From the beginning? Yeah, I think so. I think when we yeah, started back, we knew that that was how, mm. yeah, by the episode four, that would happen. Mm. Gosh, sort of, like, tough going into that, knowing that, I guess it must have been sort of, Exciting or worrying for you, kind of knowing that the story was going to come to an end of that will yeah, they won't thing. For me, it was sad because it's like they're never ever going to get the happy ever after. And a lot of shows on TV, they always get the happily ever after, mm. always, and, and in movies and stuff. So for you know to have that in the back of your head the whole time that yeah we are happy right now, but it's not going to last long. Yeah. Was, is it exciting for you to sort of explore Georgie away from the context of Elvis and that story? Because obviously so much of her story so far has been based on the relationship. She's yeah. kind of got going a new direction now, right? Yeah, it is. It's very exciting. And I love the fact that she had a bit of time off. She's mourned for him. And it's like, right, now I'm going to throw myself back in work. And that's what she does. And she goes to join two section. And they go on a humanitarian mission in um, Nigeria. 
So yeah, it's good. yeah. I'm glad that she's had a time out and then she's thrown herself yeah. back in work. Well, I mean, what do you think it is? Like, Ben, I'm kind of interested to get your perspective on this as well. Um, the, why are people so obsessed with the, with the Georgian Elvis relationship? Because it really has captured people's imaginations, hasn't it? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it's the whole will they, won't they? And it's it's kind of tumultuous, and uh, both of them both of them have doubts about whether it will work or not. I think she certainly does, but they've got like this this base attraction, kind of like mm. pulling themselves together. Um, I think it's yeah, you never know whether it's going to be a success for them or not, basically. Uh, so tonight we we sort of mentioned we pick up the story and your character. She's moved on a little bit because we've jumped forward six months ahead in time, right? We, we know that she's had some time out and she's done some training back in Preston. But it's kind of where, where is your character at emotionally and, and where is your character also? Uh, I think, well, I know that Georgie is still grieving Elvis. She is. Um, but for her recovery, I think she, she wants to work. She needs to work. She needs to be around the boys again. And she feels that she has to be doing something good. Um, so I think that's where she is. At, she's at, at the moment. Mm. And how about Captain Jones? Because he's lo he's lost a he's lost a mate out of this as yeah, well. So yeah, they're, they're best mates. So I think in a similar in a similar position, although he's having to kind of bury his grief a lot more because he has to be strong for obviously two section, and he's there to do a job. Um, and I think he's very much got his eyes on Georgie as well. I think he's particularly worried about her, you know, and she's his responsibility after all. So yeah, I think they're both grieving, but I think Captain James slightly more quietly, and actually think it's affecting him massively, mm. which we start to see a lot more of as the series progresses, you know, yeah. the, the cracks start to appear big time. Because also your character, on the face of it to everyone else, she's kind of putting on a bit of a bit of a brave face at the moment, and then we see sort of private moments in, in tonight's episode where she does start to break down a little bit. Uh, how do you think that's going to unfold for her over, over the rest of the series, that grief? Um... Like I said, I think her being around suit section, her, you know, putting energy into work and doing good. And that's where you're going to see it tonight in this episode where she sort of follows her heart more she, than... She's kind of trying to distract herself, isn't she? Yeah. Totally, all the time. And you, I think even, you know, towards the end of the series, you still see flickers of that as well. It's a coping mechanism, I suppose, exactly, isn't it? Sort exactly, Sort of throw yourself back into work. Uh, well, we're going to take a look at a clip now. And this is both of you uh, discussing what has happened in the six months in between the two parts of the series. It's hard stuff there, and that's kind of a bit of an insight as to, to where we get with your characters are at mentally. Uh, what do you think having that sort of six-month jump has done for the story? Do you think it's, it's important that it's moved on from, from where we last were? Yeah, definitely. I think, obviously, at the start, it was such a shock, and I think all the characters will still be reliving that moment for a long, long time. So I think it needed that jump, jump for things to progress and the storylines to progress as well. Yeah. Will we get to see much more of, of that interim period, do you think, as the series goes on? Well, I suppose you know, but... Interim period of, of like the grief and stuff? Yeah, so the stuff that we haven't seen while you've been at, at training camp and stuff. Will we get to see much of that in like flashbacks or anything? No, it kind of... There are a few flashbacks, I think, to the incident itself, yeah. but um, no, no, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, Elvis is still kind of very much present in tonight's yeah, episode. Yeah, he, he's he? really present. I think for the for the well, actually for throughout the the whole of the rest of the series, he's really present. It's someone we speak about and you know talk about. Yeah. So tonight's episode is also the start of a brand new mission as well. You sort of touched on it briefly earlier. But what what do they find themselves in in Nigeria for? What what are they what are they up to? They're there for a, it's a humanitarian mission. So they're there to um, deal with some med medical stuff, some inoculations for the local community. Um, that kind of goes disastrously <laughs> wrong. But As said, ever on our yes, girl, right? <laughs> you know, mostly because of Georgie Lane. Um, uh, but yeah, but, but they're on humanitarian and uh, yeah, it kind of gets a bit tricky. Uh, and there's also tension sort of between uh, brains tonight. We sort of yeah. see that there's uh, something going on there. Are you able to sort of tease what... what what might be playing out with his character? Um, we probably can't say exactly what's wrong. Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a, it long, was a time long time ago. ago. <laughs> um, but it's something personal um, that he sort of tries to, you know, hide from yeah. the rest of the two section and sort of deal with it in himself, and he finds that very difficult. Yeah, he's struggling with something that makes his behaviour a little bit erratic, a little, mm. un a little unpredictable. But it's probably better not, not to know. Yes, let's not spoil yeah, it for yeah. everyone. But there is a new character coming into it as well, I believe, Bones, yeah. right? What can you tell us about him? He's a very, very Boy. interesting character. Um, and he goes on a really interesting journey throughout the series as well. Um, and I was, I was with Simon last night at Plays Brains. And he was, we were talking about it. And he was saying, we've never actually had a character like Bones on Our Girl. And I think the audience have found that really interesting. 
Interesting stuff to come then, I'm assuming. A lot of interesting <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I know long-term fans of the show as well that go back to series one will want to know what's going on with Molly. Is there any sort of mention as to, as to what she's up to this series? Oh, yeah, yeah. She'll, she'll definitely be mentioned, yeah. She's present, for sure, in conversations and stuff. And, you know, there's always the mobile phone and everything. But, um, uh, yeah, her, her and James are still going. I don't know how strong they're going, mm. but it's, it's, it's still there, yeah. It's still there and it, it, it's still going on. Uh, we've had a question come in on Twitter. This one is from Alan. Alan, thanks very much for your question. Uh, he asks, in preparation for the role, Michelle, did you have to do any boot camp training? Which I'm sure you must have done. Yeah, right? we all did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of boot camp training. Um, we went to, hi Alan, by the way. We went to Aldershot and we did it the first time. You did it, uh, obviously the first times, series. Yeah. and. Yep. I've done it twice now, where we go to boot camp, we do um, infantry drills, we learn how to hold a weapon, we learn how to wear the um, uh, army, uh, what are they called again? Fatigues. Thank you. Yeah. Is that the, like, the vests and <laughs> yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. Are they stuff yeah. full of like real stuff? That's oh yeah, what I it's want real. Know. Yeah, I real. Like, I'd get them to put like light stuff in there. So no, no, it's carrying, heavy, it has to be heavy. are always carrying the real weight though. because I am. Because <laughs> now we've got a military not, advisor the whole time and he says that I don't run very well. <laughs> so I need to be weighed down to make me look like I'm struggling, but not the whole time. Shut up, Ben. But I did do a comprehensive medical training course as well, um, oh, wow. which really helped me. And I do believe that the first time I did this series I carried that through to this series and I felt a lot more confident doing it this time than well if ever you need a first aider on set you know who's she's to call there. Now, right? he knows it she's there save money on health and safety <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> shelter the rescue um now you obviously go away for such a long time to film the series I believe you away for eight months yeah. how do you sort of marry that being away from home for so long and away from your loved ones with with filming the series is it difficult I love it <laughs> <laughs> well, because we get to we, we got to go to so many countries as well. So we started in Nepal, yes. then South Africa, which is an amazing place to film. It's a beautiful country, yeah. and then we we're in Malaysia, where none of us have ever been before. Um, and so, and we're, we're putting all these different locations. Sometimes we're in the jungle, we're on beaches, we're in deserts. Mm. You know, we're really getting to see incredible countries. Mm. So very I, lucky. I love it. You know, you're doing your job and traveling at the same time. Uh, it's very good. It's very good as well for us that we we are actually a really close group yeah, of a, mates. It's a sweet relief. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, I know, we get on very, helps, very right? well. <laughs> it helps, and it's even works even on a day off. We still see each other. It's like we don't. It's not like we're going right. I don't want to see you. <laughs> you know, we've had enough of you, so I'm not seeing you again. But we are actually a really good, strong group of mates. So we're like doing a job that job that we love, experiencing all these amazing things, traveling the world with your best mates. It's kind of like uni and a gap year. All Honestly, in one go. it's yep. it's an am it's amazing. And obviously we miss home, but you know, FaceTime and uh, WhatsApp and things like that, uh, it helps. Well, I guess like Mark, your husband, lives in, in the States anyway, so he's away working, so I yeah. guess it must be nice for you to be able to still have that both sides of the world, right? Exactly, exactly. Have you ever like thought about going over to work in America at all? Like, Is that, is that um, sort of on the cards? I would never rule it out, I'd never say never. Um, we'll have to see what happens in the future. Oh, interesting. I feel like there's something there. <laughs> uh, ben, also, I want to chat about your trip to Uganda as well, because I know you went recently, right? Yeah. Uh, what was that about? What can you, what can you tell so us? So I'm, I'm working as an ambassador, or doing some ambassador work for a charity called Sendakal, which is an international development charity. And I went to Uganda to visit the projects um, out there and see what they're doing, really. Um, they work with uh, hugely disadvantaged rural communities, and they're giving them a chance to... Um, uh, learn about how to work the land and farm to, to create sustainable livelihoods. Um, so it's not handouts, it's not aids, it's people working themselves out of poverty. Mm. It's giving people dignity, confidence, all sorts. So yeah, it was an incredibly positive trip and I'm um, just amazed by the charity. So I'll be doing some work for them and trying to fundraise for them later in the year and stuff. And how did that all come about? Did they approach you? Did uh, you yeah, well, my, my uncle uh, was a founder member of the charity 30 years ago. It's their 30th anniversary uh, this year. So um, he kind of helped set it all up. So I've always known about it and grown up with the charity being mentioned the whole time and he's always flying off to Africa and this year just felt like a good time to kind of get involved. And I guess having the show as well, it's nice to be able to have a platform to sort of raise awareness for issues like that. Yeah, totally. And I think the, the show ties into it quite well as well. You know, we do humanitarian work in mm. the show. We film in Africa, loads of it's set in Africa. Um, so yeah, it kind of ties in. I guess people must have seen you on Andrew Marr on, on Sunday as well. Why was it you felt that you wanted to go and raise awareness on that show? Um, well, I got asked to do it. I've never done Andrew Marr show. And I'm not, I'm going to be honest, I'm not very <laughs> political. I'm not very political. And, you know, I don't like speaking about something, things that I'm not passionate about. Yeah. Um, but obviously, because I am doing a show like this, I have been working firsthand with the military um, and the armed forces. And I feel like, you know, it is something I can talk about now and have my opinion on that. 
So it was quite a good show to do. Well, you get to speak to a lot of real military as well to help you with the ro roles for the show, right? What kind of um, stories and advice do they give you about the kind of things that they're going through right now? We hear loads of stories, don't we? Especially when we, you know, we went to Aldershot and we work really closely with the military advisors there. And I've met a lot of female medics as well. Yeah, every year uh, as part of boot camp, we do a night where we get together at Sandhurst with with real officers and and also real squaddies and stuff. And yes, yeah, they, they call it swinging the lamp. Um, <laughs> swinging the lamp in the army, which means <laughs> it means telling stories, telling war right. stories, basically. And our military advisors, um, Colonel Nigel Partington, Nigel Partington, he he is always telling us like real events and yeah. stuff, and it's it's really helpful, you know. He'll, Very he'll, helpful. He'll remind you of the fact that he he has been out in all these situations yeah. before you're going to go and do it, mm -hmm. and it inspires you to try and be as authentic as possible. You know, we're, we're telling amazing stories, and it's mm. a great opportunity. So and he's all he's on there on set all the time. Yeah. Or every day he's on Watching set. Watching everything like a whore. Every, if your shoelace is undone, he's like, get your shoelace done up now. <laughs> it's Literally. got to be authentic, right? It has to be authentic, <laughs> yeah. I guess that's the important thing to remember as well, is it? Is while we might sit and enjoy and watch our girl, is there's people doing this job for real exactly, out in yeah. these countries, right? Exactly. And, and they deserve all our support. A uh, bit of a gear shift, but uh, tonight sees you go up against Love Island in the schedule. Yeah. Are you a bit nervous about that? Because <laughs> the ratings came out this morning and Love Island has come back to its biggest ever rating. Who cares about ratings? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen either. They're going to watch, I think they should watch Our Girl first, record Love Island, and then watch, and then fast forward with the, um, Catch up on fast Love forward with the adverts. Does everyone agree on that? <laughs> there we go. You got to in that. Because well, so. BBC, you get no adverts. So you can watch that in one go and then watch Love Island after with no adverts. That sounds good, eh? Perfect plan. You Did go. you watch Love Island last night, both of you? I hate to say it, yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I did, I did. Are you yeah. a fan? Um, it's, it's, I wouldn't even say guilty pleasure anymore because everyone loves Every, the show. It's just a pleasure. But I don't it? really want to publicise Love Island right now. <laughs> we're here to talk you were trying girl. to get me into it last year whilst we were away filming. Yes, we tried to watch it last year, but we couldn't stream it. It was oh very no, frustrating. What a nightmare. What yeah, an absolute nightmare. nightmare. Uh, I want to touch briefly on Coronation Street because we couldn't have you here without mentioning it. It's riding the crest of a wave at the moment. It's just won Best Soap at the British Soap amazing, Awards. Yeah. How does it feel sort of being able to look at the show now and, and seeing it do so amazingly well? Um, really proud like I was I felt very sorry I felt very lucky to be part of Coronation Street um, and it doesn't feel like I left four years ago it felt like I left I a year ago it's gone so quick and you know, I was I was at BAFTA a few weeks ago and I caught up with all the people there you know he was who was God say I can't speak <laughs> who I used to work with um, but it's such a nice show to be a part of it really is and it is a very very cliche thing to say but it is like your family yeah and they are like my family yeah and i root for them every single time they're up for an award i'm rooting for them and jack p shepherd as well who you worked really closely with on the show has just been turning out some amazing yeah. stuff right they're really deserved yeah all the you know all the uh, positive feedback he's getting i think he's an amazing actor yeah it's credit credit where credit exactly due and, and a Definitely. lot is due there i guess it must be quite difficult as well when you're filming each and every way in the country, yeah. uh, in the world, even yeah. uh, for you to keep up with it. But um, it's weird because nice although I don't, I don't watch it a lot now because, like I said, I'm away. Every time I do sort of like watch it, I stop by and quickly pick up. <laughs> I, 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 I understand the storylines completely. And it's like I'm back there. Again. Yeah, it's like you're in the middle of the street. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do, you get, do you get nostalgic when you watch it? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I was a big fan of Cor Cory growing up. Anyway, like I've watched Guess being it all from my Manchester, life. You have to be right. Exactly. I watched it all my life. So for me. It was a great privilege to be part of that show. Is there a part of you that just wishes you could just do a little nip back and then leave again? Or are you kind no, of glad you had I that feel, big storyline? I feel line? happy. I feel like, you know, I, I did an amazing six and a half years there and I've closed the door and I've sort of moved on. And it's really nice to look back on yeah. and have fond memories of that. And you've gone on to do some amazing stuff since. So oh, it's touch wood. <laughs> it continues. <laughs> uh, before we go, I know there's going to be a lot of people that want to know about the possibility of Series 4. We've obviously got another tour to come after this one yeah. as part of Series 3. But Series 4, is there any rumblings yet? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Couldn't possibly say. Yeah, we can't say in that. Would you say. like to do more? <laughs> Depends how we do against Love Island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, or would you prefer to just go on Love Island? You know that what it is? Easy. I just don't want to give anything away, so I'm very... We're like that. Um, cagey. <laughs> yeah, very cagey, yeah. With no spoilers. Oh. Um, but yeah, we're very lucky to be part of the show. Yeah, love it. Yeah, we are, and we love every second of it. Um, yeah. 
Well, it's a brilliant show, and it's back tonight, 9 p.m. on BBC One. Uh, Michelle and Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, that is also it from us today. If you've missed any of today's interviews, you can catch them all again online at buildseries.com forward slash UK. And uh, we're also back next Tuesday with loads more guests for you. Uh, but in the meantime, everyone, please give out one last time for Michelle and Ben. Thank you. <laughs>